Hi, I'm Marilyn from Marilyn Smith Designs. I'm here today for Amy Howard at home. My journey with Amy and her products began during COVID in 2020. Um, at the time, I was um, an adjunct assistant professor at the university and my job changed and so I really needed something to keep me busy. I was used to being busy all the time. So I ran across an ad for Amy Howard's Old World Finishing Course, and I signed up. Loved it. I had so much fun learning all the different techniques. I love Old World Finishes anyway. It was right up my alley. And since then, I've taken other courses, and I'm also part of a creative community um, of women and men who paint. And we love to share what we do and how we do it and the different techniques that we've developed. It's incredible. It's such a great group. Um, I'm so fortunate to be part of. So, so that being said, I'm going to show you um, how to create a painted fabric that resembles the highly desirable and very expensive Fortuny fabric. Fortuny was a designer in the early 1900s in Venice, and um, he developed a technique that includes fabric hand painted with metal. So beautiful, it's so gorgeous. And so it's also very, very expensive and something that most people aren't gonna buy. But I'm gonna show you how to reproduce it for yourself. Um, what I'm gonna do is recover a chair. This is the chair. Um, I'm going to show you how to paint fabric that'll look like a Fortuny fabric and then I'm going to recover this chair and I'll show you at the end what it will look like. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the materials that we're going to need for this project, you're going to need to buy some unbleached muslin. This muslin, I'm going to be using it for a seat cushion. So it's been washed, dried, and pressed. And um, I've been, I cut it to fit my cushion. You're also going to need some gloves. You're going to need uh, several colors of Amy, Amy Howard's One Step Paint. I have um, Holy Moly, I have Coral Sea, I have Massey Hill, Frankly Scarlet, and Peachy King. Okay, those are the colors that I'm gonna use to create this wonderful fabric. I also am going to use three different colors of mica powder. I have copper, copper penny, chocolate pearl, and pearl. And I have Amy Howard's glazed over. I have several containers which I'm going to show you how to use or what to use those for in just a minute. And at the end, we're going to use Mind Your Own Beeswax to create a nice finish over the fabric so that it doesn't get destroyed on the seat cushion. And then I'm also going to be using a stencil. The stencil I'm going to be using is Amy Howard's Mesh uh, Venetian Damask uh, stencil. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, is I have to dye the fabric. So I'm going to put my gloves on because this color will seep into my cuticles and all over my hands and it won't look pretty. <laughs> so, And my hands are going to be in a lot of different paints as we do this. Now, I had to create a water bath. The water bath looks like, looks like this, okay? So I have um, Massey Hill is the color that I have in here. I have 20% paint and uh, the rest of it water. So 20% paint to whatever water you need, okay? So also, it kind of settles on the bottom, so you have to kind of stir it up. All right, like this. Kind of get the, you can see that it kind of gets gunky on the bottom. And um, we really want the vibrancy of all the paint to be in the water so that it gives a nice, really beautiful color.
color on the fabric. This is the medium value. This one um, is medium. The, the light values will be um, holy moly and coral sea and peachy king. And they are lighter than this. And then the dark one is going to be frankly scarlet. So you'll see. I'm going to, you know, I have to show you as I, as I do it. Okay. I think that's ready. Okay. So now I'm going to take the fabric and I'm going to scrunch it up. I'm going to make an accordion out of it or else just gather it up in my hands. Gather it up like this. And then I'm going to put it in the water. Okay. This is the messy part. Okay. This is for why you have to wear gloves. You have to make sure that it all gets covered in the water and the fabric color. Okay. So getting there. Got to make sure it's all in the water. There you go. It's starting to absorb now and it's easier to to push down. There we go. Now this should really sit for a few minutes. So while this is sitting, I'm going to move it out of the way. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how to create the water that you need for this project. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I got that rest, I've got all of them mixed up except for the Peachy King. So I'm going to mix up the Peachy King. Give it a stir. Okay, so the Peachy King is two ounces of paint and six ounces of water. Now I already have the six ounces of water right here. Now I need to get the two ounces of paint and I'm going to pour it all into this container. So I have these uh, marked uh, measuring little cups here. So I'm going to fill it up to the two ounce mark. There you go. Be patient. It might take a minute. I hate pouring them because then I get the paint all over the side of the can and all over the top. So I would rather just spoon it in. All right. I think that's about two ounces. So I am going to put this in my bowl. I think I need to move over a tad. There we go. And put that in the bowl. And I'm going to try and get it all out with this water, which is already pre-measured. pretty good. I'm going to add the rest of the water. There we go. This is the Peachy King light value. All right, that's exactly how you make how you mix it up. Um, <clears throat> some of the other ones I've added a little bit more paint than the two ounces to the six ounces of water. Um, Coral Sea, I've done half and half because it was not showing up at all on the fabric when I did my demo. And so I really wanted it to be a little bit richer. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. This is ready for us whenever we get to that point. So now I'm going to remove the um, fabric from the water bath. Now, here's something that I learned is that you have to wring this out really, really well because if you don't, by adding the other colors with the water in them, your um, fabric gets so wet that it everything starts to just kind of merge together and you have one solid color instead of instead of the different colors that you know that is signature to the Fortuny. So I'm going to squeeze this out pretty good. Okay, I think I got it. 
I take my glove off. I have to do a little adjusting here for a minute. Okay, so like I said before, it's important to have your tempered masonite because it doesn't absorb the water um, like a drop cloth or a piece of uh, paper that you would use your use underneath your um, your project. Okay, you have to you know stretch it out a little bit. Now I'm only going to be doing as much as you can see on the camera, and I will finish the whole thing once I'm done with this demo, and then I will uh, come back later on after it's dried, and I'll we'll go on from there. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some of these light value. This is the Coral Sea. It's already been mixed. This is the one that I did half and half because when I did my um, sample, it just didn't show up. So I wanted it to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more vibrant of a color. So you take your wet sea wool sponge and you put it in the paint. Kind of squeeze it out a little bit. Remember, you don't want this to get overly wet because then you're going to lose your design. Now, you can roll it. You can roll the sponge in a random direction. Um, just don't make it, you know, like it's a pattern that's prefigured. It's got to be organic. And um, this is one of many colors, so you don't have to do it all right now. I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to get the Peachy King that we just made. And I'm going to bring that over here. Okay. And give it a stir. Okay. And now I'm going to use a different sea wool sponge. And I'm going to use this color to kind of go where um, the other spots that aren't covered by the coral sea. See, uh, it's, it's not showing up as great, but it'll show up when it gets dry, I guarantee you. But it is pretty. It's the different shades of coral and orange are so beautiful. So beautiful. The room that I'm going to put that chair in has um, a blue, like that steel gray blue pillow and coverlet. And the oranges are going to look so gorgeous with it in, this, in the seat co cover. Okay. You can also dribble colors because this one isn't really showing up that much. So I'm going to kind of intensify it a little bit by putting some heavier drops down. Okay, and I'm going to kind of move it around with my finger a little bit too, um, because we don't want bubbles, <laughs> and we don't want, you know, like edges either. We want, we want it to look muted, okay? Um, the next color I'm going to use is Holy Moly. And this is a yellow. Okay. Now I am going to go back. I'm just doing the first pass because clearly this is not the look that I want. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with some of these other colors. I think I'm just gonna create some dabs here and there. But the yellow looks pretty with that first color, the coral sea. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to put this aside. And then I'm going to take my finger and just kind of manipulate the color a little bit so that it doesn't look quite so dotty. Um, because that is not how Fortuny fabric looks. It's got lots of different variations of colors in it, um, but it's it's they're so beautiful. I mean, you could when I blew it up on the computer, um, I saw all kinds of colors. I saw pinks and red, going to orange and coral, 
um, on my inspiration color. So it's 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 they're beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, the last one for the first pass is going to be frankly scarlet. This is the dark value. Okay, I'm going to give it a little stir also to make sure that there aren't any lumps on the bottom. So I think I left my spoon in there. I did. Okay, let me get that out. And uh, then I'm going to use a different seawool sponge. This is the dark value. Now I'm going to try to make the dark value go in between the light and the and the medium colors. So I'm going to do some random rolls here with the sponge. I hope you can see how this color is just going to be unbelievable. And we're not done. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination. When um, I watched Amy do it, she just kept going and going until she got it to look exactly the way that she wanted it to. And she used all kinds of different techniques. Like one of the things that, that she used was a, um, a paintbrush and kind of knock it against... I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to show you. So you knock it against... I'm going to try knocking it against this paint. We have little bitty, little bitty dots to give it some interest. I'm going to rinse that off. And I'm going to do the peachy king. No, this is the coral. This is coral. Coral C. Okay, here we go. try some other things now. I think I'm going to add some some more coral. Coral C. I think I'm going to add some more of that. I kind of like that way that color goes with the yellow and the deeper reds. I'm going to kind of make that a little bit more prominent here and there. It's so pretty. So pretty. Wait until you see it with the metal, the mica powders on it. It's unbelievable. Okay. Now, some of these got a little bit dark. I'm going to merge those in with some other colors. Okay, I kind of like that. Looks gorgeous, okay? Because you know what? When you buy fabric, it doesn't have splotches on it. It's more of a solid, but it's got different variations in, in the threads and the colors. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. Okay. It's got to be wet. You can't use acrylic paint either. It has to be chalk paint. It has to be Amy Howard's paint. <laughs> no, but it does does not work with acrylic paint at all. So um, I don't know why, but it doesn't. And and this is this is what you have to use. It's beautiful. Okay. Some more, some more of these or this orange to cover up some of that yellow. Some of that yellow is just a little, it needs to be there, but I don't need to see it so prominently. Okay, now I need some frankly scarlet again. 
This is the darker color. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to lift it up a little bit just to see kind of how we're doing here and I think I still see a little bit too much yellow so I'm going to go back with some of the orange coral sea I have to be careful because I don't want it to get overly wet because then I run the risk of having it be like just like one solid color and that is not the look that we're looking for. All right. Okay, so I'm going to continue to work on this. And um, I will, because I've got to finish the rest of it. I am only showing you a little section of it. And then um, when I come back, it'll be dry and pressed and ready for our metallic stencil. And, um, and then that will be the last step. So I will see you in a minute. All right, so I'm going to make the mica powder glaze while we're waiting for the fabric to dry. So I'm using three different colors, chocolate pearl, copper penny, and pearl. Because I wanted this to look a little darker I'm going to do a full scoop or a spoonful of the chocolate pearl and the copper penny. I'm going to mix that up. Let's see what that looks like. It's very pretty. Very pretty. Okay, and just for a little pizzazz, I'm going to add some pearl also. I think that's perfect. I think that's exactly what I want. Beautiful. All right, let me move these out of the way. Then I'm going to um, put some glaze, some Amy Howard glazed over in a container. Give it a, give it a shake. So I'm going to pour this into a cup. There we go. Now I'm going to pour this into the mica powder. See what I have. Keep adding it a little at a time. Mix it in here really well. Wow, Woo. gorgeous. Okay. Adding more of the glazed over is not gonna change the color. It's just gonna give me more of it, which is what I probably need. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. All right, I'm ready for that. So let me get my fabric. I'll put this in view for you all. Okay. So I went ahead and laid this on my seat cushion. And basically... The, um, the, 
flat part here is where the end of the cushion is and then on the sides here. So I'm going to put the stencil facing me, which is the way if I was looking at the chair, that's the way it would be laying on there. Let's see if I can get this stencil open here. Again, this is Amy Howard's Adhesive Mesh Stencil in Venetian Damask. The great thing about this stencil is that it's sticky. It's sticky on the other side. So, all I have to do is peel it off. And then I'll lay it on. I'll lay it on the uh, fabric. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is gonna be so gorgeous. So beautiful. All right. Okay. Here we go. I got my little dauber here. I have my mica powder. And I'm going to daub into the mica powder. I need something to offload with. Let me see if I have a piece of cardboard. Yep, I have a piece of cardboard right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna offload and then I'm gonna start daubing to cover the stencil. Not to worry if you miss a few spots or some are lighter or darker because nothing is perfect in the textile world and Fortuny had lots of variations in his uh, fabric as well. So that just lends to the authenticity of it. Okay. okay I need a little bit more. It's so pretty. I'm going to do a little bit more here on the edge and then I'm going to peel it back to show you and then I'm going to pause the camera and continue on and then I'll come back and show you the finished product looks like I need a little bit more up here come on come on there we go all right let's see what it looks like this is always the fun part Oh my, so, so, so pretty. All right, let me finish working on this. All right, ta-da, here it is. So excited, it turned out awesome. The next uh, and last step is to seal it with Mind Your Own Beeswax. To do that, I'm going to put some on cardboard this and then I'm going to take my hog hair brush and I'm going to load it up and th then I'm going to cover all the fabric with it and the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to go in a chair so I definitely want to protect the fabric and anyone who sits on it, to be honest, um, because <clears throat> I don't think this will rub off, but, you know, I just, I do want to protect it. Um, I have grandchildren and they come over and uh, sometimes when we have a lot of people, we'll grab this chair to bring to the dining room table. So I definitely want to be able to say it's okay. Right, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this. And then the next step will be to put the fabric on the chair. I can't wait to see it on the chair. And that will be the next piece, that's, that will be the next shot you're gonna see is the finished product. So thank you so much 
for joining me today, and I hope you'll be able to do this on your own. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, there are quite a few steps involved, but well worth it. Thank you. Bye.